I recently had a great question left on one of my videos about supernovas and it was relating to what happens to the second star after a type 1 supernova. So in a type 1a supernova you've got a white dwarf, red giant or a main sequence star and the white dwarf star basically explodes into a supernova and the second star, well what happens to it? And it's not often discussed and it's not something that's really fully understood properly but it's a great question. Now if you have any questions like that then just leave a comment on one of the videos and you know, can have a look at maybe doing a video to fully explain that. So type 1a supernovas. What's happening here is that you have a white dwarf star, you have a red giant star and the white dwarf star basically pulls material off the larger red giant and it grows and once it hits a certain mass which is about 1.4 solar masses then it basically goes into a supernova now because it's supposedly always at the same mass it will explode with the same energy which makes them great standard candles for measuring distances because if they always have the same brightness we can measure how bright we see it so we can work out a distance to it so there's a great for measuring distances you know really large distances in the universe so this is kind of what it might look like. So you've got illustration on the right where you've got the material being pulled off the red giant. It forms an accretion disk around the white dwarf and which then basically falls onto it and it grows and it looks a bit like this. And on the left hand side you've got an image taken by the Chandra X-ray telescope where you can see that there's material being exchanged between the two stars where A would be your red giant and B would be your white dwarf and the accretion disk. Now, as it grows and approaches that 1.4 solar masses, it heats up. So the way that stars work is the bigger they are, the more massive they are, the higher the temperatures are because the gravitational force internally is greater, which comp compresses and heats them. So once it approaches that, that mass, that critical mass, it gets to the ignition temperature of carbon. Now, why is it important that it's ignition temperature of carbon? Well, white dwarf stars are basically the the leftover core of a main sequence star, a bit like the sun. So once the sun's gone for its evolutionary phase, gone red giant, it loses those outer layers and you're left behind with that really hot central core, which is predominantly carbon. So once it reaches the ignition temperature of carbon, then the entire white dwarf star is going to ignite essentially in a thermonuclear explosion. So hopefully this video We'll show you a little bit more. So you can see that material being pulled off. It's then orbiting the white dwarf star and it's growing. The white dwarf star is heating up and then it just goes into a supernova explosion. And this star, the red giant that was nearby, well, what happens to it? Does it get destroyed? Because the white dwarf star does. So the white dwarf star at the center is generally completely destroyed. Now, that's not always true depending on what that cause the supernova. So you can get mergers of white dwarf stars without a red giant and they're slightly different. But if it's a single degenerate star like a white dwarf and a normal star, then the white dwarf star is typically destroyed. And then you're left with the other companion star. Now, what's thought to happen or what some measurements have been taken of a particular one and it's expected that that second star basically gets a kick, a velocity kick in the direction of the supernova. So if the white dwarf star explodes, it's going to deliver it some kinetic energy with the explosion. So it will have um, a higher relative velocity than it would have done. So they would have been on an orbit to start with. So you can see there you've got the, actual, the white dwarf of exploding supernova on the upper right. And then the other star that's orbiting and actually orbiting a common center of mass and it would have had an orbital velocity associated with that but it will have received an additional velocity kick outwards once that white dwarf star actually explodes so it gets a, a a change in its velocity which we can measure it will be very high more than it should be and also it's going to strip out a material off so the red giant star is they're fairly um expanded anyway their outer layers are quite diffuse and it will strip those layers off so you get a stripping of the outer layers of the star and it gets a velocity kick but it's not destroyed so it actually survives that process that companion star will continue to evolve on its own evolutionary path 
it will be a little bit different to if it didn't have a nearby supernova explode, but it still undergoes that same evolutionary path. Now, it could be that it would be over-luminous or under-luminous for an equivalent star of the same age. So that could be because it's absorbed more energy. It strips some of the layers off. So it will change it slightly. This So this particular companion star, although it's going to evolve like a normal star, if it's had a lot of outer layers stripped off, then it's obviously going to be less luminous. It may have absorbed some of the energy, which may make it more luminous. So it depends on the specifics of the actual system. But it would survive, and it just slightly changes its characteristics afterwards, depending on a few parameters. So that's the good news. Probably something worth thinking about, though, is that if, it, if there was any planets here in any one of those star systems orbiting around them, what's going to happen to them? So the stars can survive with a little bit of um, damage on them, but what's going to happen to a planet? Which is worth maybe having a think about. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.